for joining us today. Um, I'm Brian Costello from TE Connectivity, and today I'm going to go through the changes to the ORV3 bus bar and the related bus bar connectors. So first thing I wanted to talk about is the changes uh, from ORV2. Uh, ORV2 did support 48 volt bus bars, uh, but the, the, the standard was a little different. And when we shifted to ORV3, we did that we really need to make some changes. Um, you know, from, as was spoken previously, we've gone to a 48 volt uh, really to reduce losses and to you know, improve performance. Uh, we are using a very similar laminated bus bar, so it's different than the 12 volt where we had a two dual parallel bus bar. It's now a single laminated bus bar uh, in the same space, so the cage looks very similar, uh, but the internals are different. Um, the power shelf um, now uses a connector instead of the previous bolted connection. Um, and in that case, the bolted connections were defined, so you had to put the power shelf where it was defined to be. Now it can actually be placed anywhere uh, in the rack where, uh, where is needed. Um, we also added some additional bus bar connector features. Um, we've increased the current capacity of the connectors. We've added chassis ground contacts to the IT gear and the power shelf connector. Uh, and we've also added sense contacts into the IT gear connector. We've made some dimensional changes to the bus bar itself, including a wider opening, which enables the chassis ground contacts that we added. Um, we've also then added conductive surfaces on the inside that mate to those um, contacts in, on the connectors. Um, and then we've also uh, finally made the bus bar touch safe. Um, so now it will actually pass any kind of a UL type of a, a safety test. Um, so, getting a little more detail about the bus bar profile, um, and so as, we, as I just mentioned, we have um, conductive surfaces defined in the interior surfaces of the bus bar cage. We've changed the uh, lead-in profile of the, lamp, of the bus bar itself. Previously with ORV2, it was more of a flat shape. Now we've changed it to be more of an arrowhead shape, and this enabled us to get to a higher um, blind mate pickup in the horizontal direction. Um, as I mentioned, the bus bar has gotten, um, yeah, the opening is wider. It's now 20 millimeters where it was 17 previously. And then we've also shifted back the conductors from where the ORV2 version was. And that is, it was really done purely for the touch safe requirement that we have now. Um, and so the bus, the power shelf itself can now be placed anywhere along the bus bar, but there are effects that need to be considered. Um, if you apply the, put the power shelf at the top or the bottom, the capacity of the bus bar is really defined by the inrush current of the power shelf. And so we really have to size the bus bar you know, for that. Now, if you place the bus bar in the center, uh, I'm sorry, the bus bar, the um, power shelf in the center, now you're actually delivering the half the load either direction. So in this case, the same bus bar that's really defined for a 500 amp could be used you know, with twice that current where it's flowing up and down. And so we did some simulations on that. Uh, this first simulation is uh, with a flat uh, style cross-section bus bar. And we can see when we apply a, a 320 amp load to the center, we have about a 13 and a half degree CT rise in the bus bar. When we double that current in the center, we're seeing that the, the, the T rise of the bus bar only increases slightly to about 15 degree C. Um, and uh, in a second analysis we did where we looked at a stepped shaped bus bar, and this has an increased cross-sectional area for a higher load. You know, in that case, a 600 amp load at one side drives a 24 degree C T rise. But again, double that current in the center, it only increases to 27 degree, which is still below our requirement of a 30 degree max T rise. Um, so next, the IT gear connector, I want to talk a little about the more detail about the changes that we made or additions. Um, it was derived again from the ORV2 48 volt uh, bus bar connector. Um, and in, what we did differently now is we added the chassis ground contacts that I just mentioned. Um, so there's, oh, sorry, there are um, now the contacts on the sides. They are intended to um, ground the chassis itself of the IT gear to the rack itself. Um, so those contacts mate first when the IT gear is inserted into the rack and are the last thing to break. So we have a full ground contact uh, from chassis to chassis. 
Um, those contacts are designed to conduct twice the AC input current, which is 32 amps. So these contacts are designed to handle 64 amps for a maximum of two minutes, which is the specification. We've added new sense contacts to the IT gear connector. Um, these are mate last, break first. Now these would be used in conjunction with your hot swap circuitry. Um, and so even with, with a standard design as it is now, hot swap circuitry can sense the insertion of the equipment into the rack, but it really can't sense the, if, if the equipment is pulled at under load. And so with these, hot, these sense contacts, the hot swap circuitry will see that you're unmating and it has about 10 milliseconds to power down um, the, hot sw the, the power to the equipment so that when you unmate, you're not unmating under load. And we've done some um, analysis and, and testing on this. And they're, they're, if you are unmating under load with 48 volt, depending on the speed that the, at the, it's unmated, you will do damage to the bus bar and the connector. So it's imperative that you're including the hot swap circuitry you know, into that design if you want to protect you know, for hot unmating as well as hot mating. Um, we've added some additional horizontal float to the design as per before, which is why we made the dimensional changes to the bus bar and connector. Um, it was two millimeters, now we can pick up um, three millimeters. Um, and then we've also increased the current capacity where the previous design was 75 amps, now we're designed for 100 amps. Uh, we have two versions of the IT gear connector. The first is a screw mount design. Um, this utilizes um, washers and screws similar to what we're doing with the 12 volt connector. Um, insert from the back and then we you know, attach the screws to, to mount it. Um, and the panel cutout um, is, is really what defines the amount of float we have. So if you had a design where really you, you wanna maybe limit the float for whatever reason from three millimeters, let's say to two, you really just change the dimensions on the panel cutout. You don't need to really do anything to the connector. Uh, we also have a toolless version, uh, which is our latest you know, development. Um, and this has the same three millimeter of, of side to side float. Um, and then it also has the, the two millimeter vertical. Um, it's a little different in that, you know, we don't need to have any kind of um, screws or any other fasteners to attach it. Um, we have features um, to you know, provide the, the alignment uh, in, and allow the amount of float that's required. Um, the way it, it attaches to the panel, we have um, features in the top and bottom of the panel cutout that allow the connector to pass through. There's tabs on the front of the connector. As it inserts through the panel uh, to one side, it eventually is, is enabled to be able to slide towards the center. And when you slide it about three millimeters close to where it's off center, then the um, locking feature can be enabled, um, which then prevents it from sliding back out into that zone, which then lock, keeps it in the panel. Now for removal from the panel, it's basically that in reverse. The um, locking feature is retracted. That allows the connector to be slid all the way to the side and it can be removed. So again, a, a toolless uh, version, so you don't, again, need fasteners. Uh, the panel cutout is different. Um, so you would have to def define your panel for one or the other. Um, it's not a universal cutout, so you know, all these dimensions are defined. And once again, if you wanted to limit the, the float below the two millimeter vertical and three millimeter horizontal, you would just change some of these dimensions of the panel. Um, and then the bus bar itself is touch safe. Um, so we ran some analysis and we did some dimensional, you know, where we increased the dimensions of the panel, actually a little beyond the tolerance at 20.5 millimeters and reduced the thickness of the, of the bus bar in the center down to its minimum of 5.8. And then with a UL finger probe, you know, we have adequate creepage and clearance distances. Um, as these dimensions would move at nominal or the other direction, obviously the creep and clearance would actually increase. Um, this is showing it to the, the ground return bus bar and obviously to the power bus bar, the 48 volt side, you know, the, the creep and clearance distance is, is actually gonna be even bigger. Um, we did some analysis on the chassis ground contacts. The requirement is to have uh, 64 amps for two minutes. So when we first started doing the, um, the simulation, we ran it at full power on both power contacts and then just 64 amps steady state. And we actually found 
you know, that we you know, had a you know, 26 and a half um, degree T rise. So we actually can carry that current in a steady state condition. Um, and, and, the, and, and we evaluated that really the chassis itself and the rack uh, bus bar itself are big heat sinks. So they're basically pulling the heat out of that. So we actually can, can carry this without even worrying about a transient condition. Um, next, I want to introduce Steve Pressel uh, from Amphenol. He is going to take us through the power shelf uh, output connector. Steve? I'm going to provide uh, updates on the output connector, as Brian mentioned. Uh, minor updates since the summit, uh, but definitely some updates. This is showing uh, the AC input from the facility. It uh, goes into the power shelf, does the AC-DC conversion, uh, showing the output connector onto the bus bar where the power is distributed. Some updates to the connector itself. Uh, the connector is rated for 360 amps load and return uh, in 30 degree T rise in still air. Uh, connector rating jumps to 500 amps return, load and return uh, in 300 LFM airflow. Max voltage drop is 14 millivolts at 360 amps and 20 millivolts at 500 amps. Uh, the ground, uh, chassis ground contacts are on the power uh, connector. They're rated for 64 amps total for two minutes, uh, 32 amps per contact. Uh, the panel thickness, uh, 1.1 to 1.32 millimeters. This is inclusive. This is for any burrs, bow, anything that could uh, be taking place in the sheet metal. The panel float on this connector is also plus or minus three millimeters in the X and Y uh, directions. Uh, the power connector uh, is not to be not intended to be a uh, position the power shelf uh, or be a mechanical stop. And this connector is not designed for, uh, it does not have a hot plug rating, so it's not intended to be mated or unmated uh, under load. This slide shows some overall dimensions uh, as well as a panel cutout. Uh, the 48 millimeter 1OU um, shelf height includes the float and you can see here it's designed for asymmetrical mounting uh, for polarization of the connector. This slide's called O-Action so this has the contacts for uh, the connectors as well as the bus bar and I'd just like to invite anybody that hasn't been to our booth uh, stop by we have told samples of the IT gear connector uh, as well as a power connector. That's it. Uh, any questions for uh, Brian or I? I have a question regarding the power one. Uh, there are two different uh, bus bar connectors. So what's the pros and cons and what's the proper use the case? by using the screw one and the toolless one? It's really up to um, the user and, and what makes more sense for your application. You know, they're both designed to meet the same requirements as far as power capacity as well as you know, float. Um, so it's really uh, some, some uh, customers prefer to be a, a more of a toolless approach where it just snaps into the panel. You know, others you know, prefer to, to screw it. So it, we do, we've gotten requests for both, and that's why we included both in the specification. Understood. So there's no difference in terms of uh, the, the properties. For example, the tools one should be able to also hold the uh, hold in the its own place firmly, right? Uh, I mean. Yeah, they're they're, they're both interchangeable function wise in, in the equipment, right? Okay. And uh, second question is regarding the 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 the, the current uh, distribution of the of the bus bar. So you mentioned about the difference between if the uh, if the uh, power shelf in the in the center yeah. or from the top, but the OCP V3 um, actually allows uh, power shelf anywhere. Yeah. So in that case, is any any suggestion maybe is it would be better to have a two different power zone, 
so to have a more um, flexibility because it's, uh, otherwise it will be really depends on the application to consider what's the uh, best and, and worst user case. Depends on the power shift location. It, it does depend on that, and that's, that really comes to the, the bus bar design and, and how it's rated. Um, and so, again, if, you're, if you have to put your shelf at one end, you're going to rate it for you know, that, that, fi that amp. So it's one shelf at 500 amp, you're going to have to rate your bus bar. Now, the, the back end of the bus bar is not defined by the spec. So if you have to have more current capacity, you're going to have to have more copper there to do that. And, and generally speaking, if you're at one end, you're going to have to have you know, more copper in the bus bar to handle the load at that location. You know that same load placed in the center. You know it would need a, could use a smaller bus bar or a, with a smaller cross section, less copper. So it is dependent on your on the application, but there is flexibility on the bus bar side to to solve that problem of of how much current capacity you need for in the bus bar. Okay, thank you. Quick question. <clears throat> The, the IT bus bar connector that's going to go onto the equipment that pops in and out, um, does, is, that, is that connector pre-wired with the sense and, and the ground in return, or is that something like... How does that actually work? So it is it is pre-wired. So the the, the, the versions that the TE um, has, it, we would sell a cable assembly with the, with the wiring. And so the, the definition of what's on the other end would be up to our customers. So we can put anything, tabs, you know, made it to a connector. We can put anything that, that you would want uh, on that. Thank you very much. Sure. So th there's actually some examples of uh, the different output cables that you can put on there in uh, in the TE booth. If you want to see some just different opportunities. Mm, there's a question online asking about the RU type. Uh, so it seems like this design is based on OU. Is there a version of the connector for RU applications? So the, the IT gear connectors, uh, both connectors were designed for a, a one RU minimum uh, size. And so we, we do support RU um, as well as OU, which is obviously bigger. Thank you. All right, well, I forget there's no more questions. Uh, thanks for presenting. It was good stuff. Uh